Hello everybody, thanks for joining me with this adventure. This video today is about the install and it's the install for my ground mount system. I do plan on doing more solar videos. So I've been looking into solar for years, but I got serious in 2018. Originally I wanted to go with Tesla solar, but found out that they couldn't install on my roof because of the metal roof that I installed in 2016. Now I wasn't about to replace my roof again, so I decided to forego solar in 2018. Then in 2019, I found out that the government rebate of 30% was going away at the end of 2019 and it was going to go down to 26%. Once again, I set out to try and find the right solar for me. But this time I used a website called Energy Sage. Also, I wanted a ground mount install. The pitch of our roof just was not conducive to solar, so I knew that I wanted a ground mount installation. We live on an acre, and the entire backyard is not fenced in. Only a third of the backyard is fenced in. The other two thirds just sits there. Shoot, that's the perfect place to install something that you don't need to look at. I told everybody on Energy Sage that I wanted a ground mount system, and they provided quotes accordingly. I had a system all selected and was working on getting it installed when my wife and I decided to stop and take a second look. So our main issue is that it didn't have a backup solution. What would happen if the power went off during a beautiful sunshiny day? We would have a $50,000 solar system sitting there unused until the power returned. I put a stop to the talks and it ended up missing out on the 30% rebate for 2019. Life happens and the timing just didn't work out for us to get the solar system installed. When 2020 came around, I knew that really this was going to be the last year I could get this project going. Because after 2020, the rebate falls to 22%. At 22%, it wasn't going to be enough payback for us to install such a large system. So I knew 2020 was going to be my last year really to do this. The return on investment just wouldn't be there if we didn't get at least 26% back. This time I knew what I wanted. I wanted a solar system that would not only power my house during the day, but would also recharge power walls. Once they are recharged, I'd then spin the meter backwards until the sun went down, which would produce enough power to fill in those gaps. Also, the power walls would kick in when the sun went down and provide power until the next day when the cycle would begin anew. What happens if the power goes out during a nice sunshiny day now? Nothing. We would see no change. That is the system I wanted. Once again, back to Energy Sage we went. I did finally pick a system. So let's talk about the system that I installed. First, the contractor. I had a quote with a company called SunPower and I wanted to go with them. But the price, they were a good 25 to 30% more than any other installer. Also, the price that I got quoted from them was only for two power walls. And during this process, I realized I really needed three or four power walls. So I wasn't going to go below three power walls. I wasn't sure two would be enough. I had several other quotes for two power walls. And I had 50 to 60 panels for 26% less than Sunfire. In the end, I chose an installer out of Houston called Sunshine Renewables. Their main selling point was that they could get me a system with three power walls as well as a solar system that should come close to net zero energy for my house without the power walls. So I ended up with 50 panels and three power walls. This in my opinion was the best of both worlds. It was at least 25 to 30 percent less than Sunfire. Also Sunshine Renewables allowed me to choose my system. I had researched tons of panels. I mean I had two years of research on panels and inverters. I knew I knew that I wanted to go with the LG Neon 2 series panels. They had a higher efficiency, they had less loss over the lifespan of other panels. Inverters. Basically, there's two types. You have string inverters and micro inverters. Micro inverters allow each panel to operate on its own. String inverters only perform to the level of the lowest output. Meaning if you have a panel that's only producing half of what it's capable of, then the other panels will only produce to that level. However, not all string inverters are the same. Some string inverters, this is not a problem. I knew I wanted a microinverter system. Microinverter systems are usually more expensive because you have to have an inverter per panel, whereas string inverters, you only need a couple. Which microinverter? I decided to go with Enphase. Enphase to me seemed like the best. Also, Enphase offered monitoring for each solar panel. 
which I really wanted to know. I wanted to know what my solar panels were producing. I wanted to be able to watch each solar panel. So my overall system that's being installed, I have 50 in-phase microinverters. I have 50 LG Neon 2 solar panels. And I'm going to have three Tesla Powerwalls installed. I'll do a separate video on the Powerwall install. With the tax credit back in my pocket next year, I'll be paying out what my monthly electric bill is, and I'll be paying that out over the next 20 years. My ROI is going to be 20 years. So at the end of 20 years, obviously my investment will start making money. ROI was the last factor for us. We knew we'd take a big hit adding the power walls. Originally, we had an ROI of 12 years with just the solar system. And that was what I came up with in 2019. It was going to take 12 years to pay off the solar system. However, the solar system was replacing our electric bill. So in 12 years, we were going to start seeing a return on our investment. When we added the three power walls, it added another eight years of ROI. So the question is, is that worth it? Well, can't answer that. <laughs> I don't know if that's worth it. Today's just about the installation of the solar array. So as you can see in the video, they've moved into the garage. They're actually running the conduit in the garage. They only trenched a small portion from my fence to the garage. And then we decided to run the conduit in the garage. It was an easier install for them and it was something that I preferred. I did not want them trenching all the way to the house. So we're coming up to the end of the video. They have all the conduit run inside the garage. They just need to put the panels uh, on the outside of the house. These are the panels that talk to the sewer and the micro inverters. I appreciate you watching this video. If you made it this far, thank you very much. I'll be doing some follow-up videos with the system. Obviously testing the system, seeing how much power it produces. And there's a power wall install video after this. So thank you for watching. Have a good day.